and welcome to worship with the Strathclyde Methodist Circuit. I'm Deacon Anita Shaw and as always it's good to be worshipping with you today in whatever format you're joining us. I know I'm a little premature in centering our worship today on Candlemas but nevertheless I pray that through the story of Jesus' dedication in the temple as a baby that in that we will meet with God in a way similar to the way that Anna and Simeon met with God as they welcomed the Holy Family. Anna and Simeon glimpsed the wonder of Christ and what his coming meant for the world. I pray too that we glimpse the wonder of Christ today and wonder what his coming means now for the world, his world, our world. We begin our worship as Anna began her day with prayer, led here by Gail Balfour of Netherton. Great is your love, Lord, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. You are our God, and earnestly we seek you. God, our Saviour, you are the hope of all the earth, and we thank you for inviting us into your presence this day to worship, praise and give you thanks. You have done wonderful things. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We worship you with gladness, and come before you with joyful songs. We sing for joy and make music from our hearts to yours, Lord, the rock of our salvation. We praise your holy name, for at your command all things were created. In this season of winter, when daylight is short and earth is sleeping, when water turns to ice and skies are stormy and wild, we thank you that your light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. Help us to see the beauty of winter with your eyes and as we gradually begin to see signs of lengthening days, may we look ahead with hope to the opportunities that you will provide in this new year. Dear Father, we are sorry for our wrongdoing and confess our sins before you now. Forgive our foolish ways, Lord. Help us to learn from our mistakes and turn away from wrongfulness in word and thought and deed. Your promise is that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive us and will purify us from all unrighteousness. What have we done to deserve love like this? We cannot earn what you so freely give. It is by your gift of grace that we have been saved. Thanks be to you, O God. And so, Father, forgiven by your grace and mercy, we go forward into a new week and we ask in Jesus' name that your word may be on our lips, that we may share your love with those we meet in the days to come. Amen. Before we hear the scriptures read by Bill Scott, here is a prelude by Bob Stoner, taken from a previous recording. Simeon. Now let's hear the story from Simeon and Anna in their own words. Oh, forgive me for not getting up so quickly these days. I'm getting old. 113 on my last birthday. Yes, I know I don't look over 57, but <laughs> the silvery blonde hair. Many people make that mistake. It's okay. I've had a grand life. Take a, take a pew for a while. Let me tell you a story. I was praying one day when a voice, clear as day, 
spoke to me saying that I wouldn't die until I'd seen the Messiah. Well, you know, quite a few claiming to be Messiah have come and gone these days. But I knew that if God said I, would, I should hold on to that promise. When I were a lad, the Romans weren't in charge then. No, a priest called Judas Maccabeus, he staged a revolt that freed our people from the Syrians and that nasty Antiochus ruler. Horrible. They had tried to remove all of our religious ways of life, denying our faith in God. Well, the people had enough of persecution. So without a referendum, we sought for independence. The temple in Jerusalem was ours again and set aside for worship of God. They built a new altar, but we were sure short of oil. Oh, amazingly, the oil in the lamps lasted eight days, but previously it just lasted one day. And that's why we have that festival of lights or Hanukkah. After that, there was some infighting for power from the Sadducees and Pharisees. They tried to go into a peaceful alliance with the Romans, but that didn't work. So the Romans took over. They installed Herod as our king. Hmm. My father was a Pharisee, a patriot maybe, one who sought to follow the will of God. He once said to me, we will not have lasting peace until the Messiah rules over us. And on my 16th birthday, a few years ago, I heard that voice from God that I mentioned earlier during the festival of lights in the temple. You will see the son whom I will send. Wow! When I told my father, his face, it shone. But the Romans continued to rule over us and sadly my father died. Herod even rebuilt the temple so it looked more like Solomon's version. I now come to this part of the outer temple. Oh, it's a bit chilly to watch as people go into the temple. But this morning, wow, I saw a young mother with an infant. The man who accompanied them was older, but definitely the husband. The man paid some money to one of the merchants for some turtle doves. You know, that's the offering, you know, for a firstborn child, as, as per the law. As I watched though, my heart began to pound. This was the one. Tears started to stream down my face. I spoke to the mother there. Behold, this child is appointed to the fall and the rising of many in Israel. Well, she didn't say a word, just nodded. She just picked up the baby and hands it to me. Well, we all like to hold the baby, don't we? I said to God, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. I returned the child to mum and dad. I was bursting with joy although others in the temple were really unaware. They'll know soon enough, I'm sure. They'll know of love, true love from God to this world. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 2, reading from verse 22. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may dis now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, 
This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. What might inspire us or challenge us as we consider Simeon? He was old, but not without purpose. Some of us here today will be categorised as getting on a bit. Yet do we still have a purpose, a calling, a God-given ministry that is yet to be complete? I suspect many of us do. So let's keep on encouraging one another to persevere, asking God to reaffirm our purposes and to give us the strength and tenacity and of course the patience to hang on in there. We're told that Simeon was righteous and devout despite the corrupt actions and attitudes of some of the religious leaders of his day. How do we remain devout and true to God? in a society that has little or no time for God or for the church. I suppose Simeon had Anna alongside, someone who shared his passion for God, someone who shared his dream of witnessing the coming of the Messiah. A Messiah who would rescue the nation from oppression and pain. Yes, Simeon had Anna, someone he knew would be praying too. Isn't it easier to live as God wants when we have devout people alongside us, those with whom we can share and voice our hopes and our struggles, those who encourage us when we get tired of waiting and when we run out of patience to keep on keeping on? I wonder who you share your devout thoughts with. Do you have someone with whom you pray regularly? Do you together bring the needs of the world to God's attention, as maybe Simeon and Anna did? Do you pray with an inner sense of hope and ask God to intervene? What do you pray as a devout person? Let's not try to act small and deny being devout, thinking it's a description from, for someone much holier than I. We are holy because our God is holy. We are holy through grace and not our own volition. And we can pray as holy people, as devout people, because our God is a holy God. What else does this story tell us about Simeon? It tells us that the Holy Spirit was on him and that he was sensitive to her prompting. Does Simeon's spirituality inspire us to listen more attentively to recognise the Spirit's voice amongst all the other voices? To follow her lead? I know for myself that I fail to hear the Holy Spirit to know her promptings when my prayer life tends to go a bit off piste. I fail to hear when the daily discipline of prayer falters and when I'm apt to ignore her promptings or procrastinate over making a response. Yet we know the Holy Spirit is called the Helper and is there to help us, to bring us closer to God, to make known his heart and to guide us in our calling and in our purpose, to guide us in finding that fulfilment in life as we serve. So as we progress through this time of worship, let us be open to the idea that the Spirit wants to reveal today something of God, wants to reveal something to us personally. And let us respond with trust, because whatever age we are, God's Spirit is there to show us who Jesus is and what his coming is all about. Not just at that particular day in the temple, but in the now, in 2023. 
what the coming of Jesus means for us in our personal lives, in our local churches, in our communities, and of course, in the wider world. Heaven knows we need to experience the salvation offered by Christ in so many ways. We listen now to our first hymn. It's called Our Calling and it's sung here by Matt Beckingham. Our callings for me, our callings for you, our callings for all the church. Our calling invites us to engage in the mission of Christ on earth. I'm called to worship God my King. I'm called to learn to care and grow. I'm called to serve, to give of me, and tell of His grace and love. Tell all of His grace and love. Some are called to wondrous lands afar. Some are called to serve at home. But each of us is called by Christ to mission where we I'm called to worship God my King I'm called to learn to care and grow I'm called to serve to give of me And tell of His grace and love Tell all of His grace and love Your
Simeon felt a sense of completion. The promise God had made him had come to fruition. He was ready to depart this world in peace, knowing that Jesus was the one who would bring salvation and with it the promise of eternal life. No more fear of death. We're here now from the book of Hebrews, a passage that reassures us that we too no longer need to fear death. It's read here by Bill Scott. Hebrews 2, reading from verse 14. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who themselves are being tested. Let us pray. We hold before you, Lord God, all who are facing death at this time, Take away any fear that remains and fill them with your peace. And for those who have lost loved ones, take away their fear of the future and instill in them your comfort and peace. Amen. We come to our next hymn, which is 173 in singing the faith into the darkness of this world and the music arrangement is by Stephen Haggis. Into the darkness of this world into the shadows of Thank you. 
already mentioned Anna. So here is an, an, an enactment of the story, again taken from a previous recording. Anna witnesses the coming of Jesus. Hey friend, let me tell you about the promised one. But don't be afraid, don't turn away, it's me, Anna, daughter of Fanuel. You know me, I'm here in the temple night and day, praying and fasting. Don't you recognise me? It's me, Anna. I look different. Do I look different? Well, I feel different. So let me tell you what's happened. Two days ago, I was stood on these very steps at the East Gate and I felt this sudden surge of power striking me. Not something that would hurt me, but enough to knock me off balance a bit, to put my hand out to save myself. And I looked out and I looked out to see what it was. And I saw this very large man walking towards me, coming up the temple steps. He had this sort of strange light round him, something I can't quite describe, something that I've never seen before. But as he came closer, I could see that he had a cloak and inside his cloak was a woman and a baby. And they too had this strange light around them. And then I knew, I instantly knew. Don't ask me how I knew, but I did. I knew that this, this baby was the promised Messiah. It threw me at first. I always thought, that the Messiah would be a king or a warrior or a priest. But no, here he was, a newborn baby, the Messiah, come to save his people. And then I saw Simeon coming over. I could see that he knew as well, that he knew that this was the Messiah. His eyes were filled with tears, and mine too. My eyes too filled with tears. Every time I come to speak of it, and Simeon, he went out to meet them. He didn't say anything. <laughs> He just bent forward and took the two turtle doves from the man's hand. And then he led them away. I waited on the steps. You see, I wanted to get another look. And then I got one. They came out and walked right past me. And as they did, I caught the eye of the woman and her face was all smiling. But in her eyes, in her eyes, there was sorrow, deep sorrow. I didn't get to hold the baby, <laughs> but I did touch his tiny hand the promised Messiah, uh, a baby. <laughs> oh, who'd have thought it? What an amazing God who would come as a vulnerable child and share our humanity with us. We pause for a moment and think of the Holy Family, the joys and the sorrows that they would have encountered in raising their son. And we pause to think of our own families. Let's try and imagine the baby Jesus, the saviour of the world, being held 
in each of our family members arms imagine their expression we give thanks that Jesus can be received by each of them we give thanks for our own families we give thanks that Jesus loves each one of them and is their light. And now Joanne Smith is going to lead us in prayer. Here are our prayers for ourselves and others. Lord, we pray for those who follow the law and for those who don't, for decision makers and officers of law and government, for those who work with lawbreakers, or victims of their own and others' crimes. We pray that human laws may be just, upheld with compassion and at one with your commandment to love one another. We pray for those who are waiting and for their peace of mind, for the sick, the captive, the worried and anxious, the lonely and the seekers after truth. May all who wait have the confidence of knowing you wait with them. We pray for peace. Lord, we remember the dying and bereaved. Those who have mourned for a long time and those whose suffering is sharp and in this moment. Those who are coming near the end of their earthly life and those who watch over them. We pray that those in the caring professions respect and dignify the end of life. That the dying know your glory and their loved ones your comfort. We pray for your peace. We remember the wise and supportive people who see us through our lives. Family, friends, teachers, professionals, mentors and spiritual leaders in our own churches and beyond. We pray that all people may know and trust the positive influencers in their lives. We bring before you all the men and women who play their part in society through their work, duty and consideration. We pray for those who resolve conflict, who mediate, mediate and heal relationships, for those who give their time and labour every day for our comfort and needs. May all be valued properly for their contribution to our community, to our country and the world. We pray for peace and harmony in the workplace. Lord, we pray for ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, large and small. In the times when life is mundane, the work hard, the tasks relentless, in the moments when it would be easy to be dissatisfied and disgruntled, keep us strong and shine a light on the future. We pray for our own hope and peace. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks to all who have contributed to the content of this worship. Gail, Stephen, Bill, Joanne, Bob and to you for joining us. We'll be here again next week led by Bob Stoner. After the blessing we play out with a hymn very familiar to us um, 175 in Singing the Faith, Light of the World. A blessing. Go now in peace knowing God's word has been fulfilled. See with your own eyes the salvation of Christ offered to all peoples. The light of the world has come. Glory to God, Parent, Son and Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for evermore. Amen.